Hey everybody, welcome back to GIS Chops and Tool Belt Tuesday. Today we're going to be talking about the Locate tool. You can find that on the Map tab, but before we go into that, I want to vote to see which tool you'd like me to feature next week. So, vote on either the Move tool in the Modify Features pane, or the Measure tool on the Map tab. So just put down in the comments which one of those you'd like to see me feature next, and I'll do the one with, that gets the most votes. You find the Locate tool on the Map tab in the Inquiry group. It's this button with the binoculars on it. And this tool is the equivalent of the Find tool in ArcMap with some modifications. So if you click that, it opens up the Locate pane. And you can see that there are two different tabs here. But it lets you just start searching for things. So let's put in... an address in Washington, D.C. and hit enter and see what happens. So it automatically zooms to the first result, the one with the highest with the highest score. And it lists the, the results here in the pane and you can click on it once and it highlights that result. And it also has a letter symbol so you can match them up on the on the map. So if I click on this one it's not in the view, so I can't see it, but if I double-click it, it will pan the map to that, to that result. And if you come over here to the burger button, it gives you two different modes of view. You can, it defaults to the list view, and you can change it to the detailed view. The trouble with the detailed view is you're going to be scrolling for days if there's lots of results. Also, if you use your mouse wheel to scroll, it skips results. You can see it just skipped B, it goes straight to C, and then from C it goes to F, skipped D and E, and then I, and then J. So the detailed view takes up a lot of space if you have a lot of fields in your layers or the results. So I like the list view because it keeps all the results on the tab and I don't have to worry about the scrolling problem. So double click to pan to that result. So if you right click, you can also zoom to and pan to and then show the details, which is the pop up for that for that result. And this isn't a layer in my map. This is the world geocoder or the world locator that Esri puts out. I think it's loaded by default when you install ArcGIS Pro. I don't know if it consumes credits if you search using the world geocoder. If it does, it's it's minimal amounts of credits. But I like to add my own locators, which are more accurate. But you don't have to just search for an address, you can search for uh, an X, Y coordinate. So if I enter a, an X and Y coordinate, and hit enter, that's the Four Corners area with Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. So you can search by X, Y locations. If we come to this options button, it lists your providers. These are called providers. And this symbol means that this is a locator provider. It means you can search by address or X, Y coordinate or even point of interest. Like this world geocoder, you can enter a point of interest So that's a, you can enter points of interest, addresses, x, y coordinates. And you can even modify this even further by coming down here to the provider settings. You can see the, the, prov the two providers that we have. You can add your own locator that has, uses your data to find an address or point of interest. And then you can also add a layer. So I have Zion National Park trails loaded in this map. So then it lets you pick which field and how it how to search in it. So it defaulted to the trail feature type equals, but I don't want to search on that one, so I'm going to leave it blank. I'm going to come to the trail name and change that to contains so that it will 
match things that contain anything that I type. Now if we come back, hit these back buttons a couple times, clear that search result. Now if I hit Angels Landing, or type, even just type Angels, we get a whole bunch of results here from the World Geocoder, points of interest. If we scroll down to the bottom, we see there's the Angels Landing Trail. If I double click that, it's gonna pan to that trail. But what if I want my features to be searched first? Go back to your provider settings, select your layer, and move it up to the top. Now I'll clear this result. So now if I search for angels, it's gonna come up with my layer first, up, up top of the results, which I think is better. There are two tabs on the Locate pane. There's the Locate tab, which we've been using, and there's the Layer Search tab. Now the Layer Search tab searches all the fields in all your layers that are in the Contents pane of the Active Map. So let's search for the Grotto Trail. So there's my Grotto Trail in Zion National Park. If I come back to the Locate pane, and search for Grotto. It matches my layer, but it also comes up with a bunch of points of interest and addresses from the World Geocoder. So let's say, for example, I just want to search on my parcel ID. What I would do is I would come to the Locate pane and Provider Settings, add my parcel layer, and then pick the field that's my parcel ID and say contains or equals if I want to specify just what I type. But I don't have a parcel layer loaded. And you can you can delete one of these providers by click selecting the row and hitting the delete pro or remove from project. You can also disable it by just clicking it off. So layer search is handy if you want to search all of your layers for something, but it is kind of slow. So if you want your searches to be quicker, add your layer to the locate tab as a provider and specify the field you want searched. You would think that layer search would have that provider thing, but it doesn't. You have to, you have to add it to the locate using the options button. So the layer search lets you search all the fields in all the layers in your contents pane. But if you hit the options button here with the layer search tab active, it gives you other search options like just in this current extent or just the visible layers or to combine those two. It also gives you options like match the exact wording that you enter or any part. This enhanced search is kind of a nifty thing. You can use wildcards and other enhanced search expressions. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link of all the expressions. There's too many of them to go into right now. I'll put a link to the help doc that has all of those search helps and wildcards that help you build those expressions in the description. So head down there and, and take a look at that. There's also this enable fuzzy matching that makes it so you can, it, things aren't case sensitive or it looks for misspelled words, things like that. So to wrap things up, uh, the locate tab lets you search for addresses. If you have address locators in your providers, you can disable and enable locators. You can add layers and specify which fields you want searched and how they can be searched, whether exact matches or only contains. You can add multiple providers and disable and enable those providers. Then for the layer search, you can search all layers, all fields, and you can also use wildcards and the enhanced, enhanced search by hitting that op or the options button. So I don't know if you've ever been to Zion National Park or hiked the Angels Landing hike. Uh, Zion National Park is actually ranked number five on US News top 10 national parks. 
It's one of my favorites. It's in southern Utah. And uh, to pronounce it correctly, it's Zion National Park to the locals, not Zion. So get that right. Uh, but Angel's Landing, I'll, I'll put some pics in here of, of Angel's Landing. It's incredible. If you're not a fan of heights, I wouldn't attempt it because there are sections where you have to hang on to chains with uh, thousands of foot drop on each side of you. So uh, don't attempt it if you're afraid of heights. But even the trail up to up to this part, this is where the chains are, where the blue line is, the unmaintained trail. The hiking to here is amazing as well. You can look down onto this valley and there's a, an area of the trail called Walter's Wiggles that the trail is built onto the sandstone cliffs. Same with this area here. It's, it's phenomenal. Our daughter was probably three or four and was able to hike, hike to this point. So if you're ever in Utah, check out Zion National Park. It's a great, great national park. So let me know if you have any questions about that down in the comments. And that'll do it for this week's Tool Belt Tuesday. Don't forget to subscribe like and tell your friends and colleagues i'm going to be hitting 500 subs here soon I'm going to celebrate by giving away a magnetic globe so make sure you hit that bell get notified of any new content we'll see you next time